All right, guys, we're live. Welcome to another episode of the uh, Ladies' Night podcast. Uh, we've got an all OF uh, panel tonight. We've got Jasmine and Liz on with us and a potential third joining. We always tend to have these problems, uh, sometimes getting a gal to show up on time from time to time. But here we are. Um, Moff, you want to do the intros and, you know, we'll kick it off and get started? Yeah, absolutely. Ladies, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, really basic, just your name, where you're from, how old you are, and your current relationship status. Let's kick it off with Jasmine. Uh, my name is Jasmine Jafar. I am 28. I was born and raised in Oregon, and I'm single. My name is Alyssa. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Uh, I'm single and have been single for three and a half years. How old are you? Again? How old are you, Alyssa? Oh, I'm 23. I have a question about the single part because OnlyFans creators always hold out to the public that they are not in a relationship, but they tend to be in a relationships and they do that to sort of attract their audience you know to subscribe is that is that the general business model no i i'm sure there are some girls that do that but there's a lot of couples pages there's all different kinds of um, dynamics on OnlyFans. so i wouldn't make a blanket statement like that okay but i'm actually single <laughs> yeah yeah me too <laughs> okay um you've got an interesting story jazz when you uh started out as a lawyer you went to law school you figured out you were making way more money and having more fun doing uh of and you basically quit being a lawyer um um so my license is still active right? so my license is still active i am still an attorney um i just don't like i quit my job at my law firm mm -hmm. and i don't like practice day to day but i still got to do like pro bono and stuff in order to keep my license active so is there any issue with like the governing body like i know here in canada we've got the upper canada law society and they have certain standards you know as far as code and conduct and how you conduct yourself outside of a law firm if you're going to maintain your license do they have any of those issues for you uh no so i have two cousins that are lawyers in vancouver bc so i, I know what you're talking about we have uh, the aba here and you have to pass character and fitness but having an only fans on its own does not violate any ethical rules got it okay cool um i listened to the um podcast you did on soft white underbelly when i was driving today okay. um so i got a bit of insight in the backstory on um you because i know that you've done a few other podcasts and you, you're well versed you know you like to have these conversations i can tell it's one of your um you know one of your things um what have you noticed about some of the podcasts that you've been on and some of the conversations that you've had when you're talking to men like is there a general theme is there anything that you kind of reflect back on Mm -hmm. Yeah. So especially in this niche online, I guess, manosphere word for lack of manosphere world for lack of a better term, um, they seem really disconnected with like the rest of the world. Like at least in my general life, when I go out, when I talk to people in all walks of life, they they're so they, they just don't even know this stuff exists. But there seems to be a corner on the Internet um, where like the fresh and fits and the whatever. And maybe this show, although I've never heard of this one prior to this, um, where there seems to be like these lonely kind of almost angry men or, or kind of like these people that want to push against the narrative. They feel like the pendulum has swung too far and you are getting these like, I don't want to say incelly, but almost like very incelly type of, of men on the internet. And some of there, you know, there are some like just trad cons and they usually leave us alone. They just do their own thing. But then there seems to be this, you know, I think it's in different layers and different, um, levels to it but now because i've been doing all these shows i mean my dms get flooded with them all the time and i've i've become pretty well versed on them <laughs> do you end up landing a lot more subscribers after the shows like i know there's a lot of hate in the comments and that like you made the reference to the incelly type of behavior but do they also sign up for your yeah that's why we do it i wouldn't be doing it otherwise um that's why a lot of only fans girls do it and depending on the show and how many views it gets and how much i get clipped my income will go up from that. It, is it substantial? Like, are we talking double digits? Yeah, I mean, or? yeah. I mean, there's been times I've been on Fresh and Fit. The last time I was on the Whatever podcast, too, with Lauren mm -hmm. Chen, and those clips were um, like that week after I made like 15 extra thousand dollars that I'm attributing to that because of the influx of subscribers. So, yeah. Have you seen the same thing, too, Liz? Um, I was on a podcast that wasn't like as big, but there was a bunch of other streamers on it. Mm -hmm. Um, with like, do you know who Neon Sniper Panda is? I've heard of this guy, he's a bit of a Wally. I've seen him on Twitter from time to time. He's a young kid, uh, he's not really young, he's not old, but 
He's young, isn't he? Like twenty? No, he's not. You're confusing oh. neon, no. the neon, the guy with the glasses, and somebody. Else. Yeah, that's a different guy. Oh, oh okay. Okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. that's what I was but, thinking of. <laughs> yeah, neon sniper panda. He always had like whenever I went over there, there was like twenty people in one room, so I barely got to talk. But we did like a party stream after, which I got a lot of subscribers from, and yeah, my income went up. What is like? That's got to be a weird feeling because because you're there doing a show, having a conversation and you've got chat just crapping on you, calling you this, that and the other thing. But after the show's over, you go and look at your um, your app and you're like, oh, I just landed another whatever mm -hmm. number of subscribers from that. It's not surprising at all. I think a lot of these men, they hate themselves. And so they they subscribe, but they hate themselves for doing it. And it's pretty obvious, like they're not happy. They, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure Liz has experienced the same thing where you'll have people that follow you on Instagram and hate that they're following you and are like, I hate this, fuck you. But they're following you and they're commenting on every single thing. So it's like this obsession and hatred that they have for themselves for being obsessed with you. So I don't find it uh, surprising at all. That is literally the exact kind of character profile I would put on these kinds of people. Do you ever, oh, ever cross-check them to see, oh, that's a hate comment on my social media, but he's also a subscriber and pays me six I have had the same usernames pop up for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you didn't even change your username, buddy, but okay. <laughs> Liz, you were about to say something? Yeah, um, I was just about to say, like, a guy can hate you or hate what you do or whatever, but, you know, you're still sexy at the end of the day. So <laughs> okay. they can, you know, they can rub one out to whatever. Um. Jasmine, you said something about being disconnected from the world um, in the manosphere. What do you think of that word manosphere, first of all? Um, I don't think it has like good connotations associated with it, but mm. I think I think it's like, you know, I don't think it's all bad. And I and I have been a proponent. I do think there is an issue with young men right now. I just think a lot of the places they're going are not helpful. So because I've been doing what I've been doing, I've been trying to find like other resources. Like I really am a fan of Richard Reeves. He has a book of boys and men. It's empirically based. It has a lot of data. It has policy proposals um, that he thinks we should. He's a bit of a feminist, though, isn't he? Uh, I don't know what he identifies as but i mean i think one of the things he definitely does is he doesn't need to bring down women women in order to bring up men which seems to be something that the rest of the manosphere loves to do oh do men and or women have it easier like it's like men versus women yeah. which i don't think needs to be the way things are and i think it's kind of pointless because you're not going to bring women back that's one of the things he says that i wholeheartedly agree with like we're not going to turn the clock back yeah. So going forward, you have to go forward with gender equality in mind. And how can we help men with that instead of sitting here complaining about all of the strides that women have made? Yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Can you can you break down some of the disconnects for me first, though? Like, like what would the top three be? The top three disconnects? Like, what, what, do you mean like how these men are disconnected from the rest of society? Yeah, as you see it. Um, so I don't think a lot of these guys have, and this is just statistically accurate. A lot of these guys don't have like a lot of friends. They're spending a lot of time online. Like I, and I'm definitely doing this as like the prototype of the guy who consumes this kind of content. You can also tell, like, even with their comments and the way they type to me, these are not the most, these are not the lawyers and the doctors of our society. A lot of them are not very well educated. Um, and they're, they seem pretty lonely and, and they seem like they've gotten the short end of the stick in a multitude of ways. Yeah, but you're talking more about their, um, like the avatar, like their character, but, but you mentioned that there was a disconnect in the way that the world works as you see it versus the way they're seeing it. That's, that's kind of what I was trying to understand. Yeah. So they see it as like a men versus women thing. That's one thing. They, mm. they seem pretty disconnected from the real world as it comes to having friends, being out there, touching grass. <laughs> it's mm. kind of like the the line we, we use a lot. Um, and they seem to be very disconnected um, as to how a healthy relationship works, right? Especially if you're watching like The Fresh and Fits where they say, oh, women only want you if you make this much money and if you're like this and this and this and then then you have to find the youngest, most fertile woman. And then you like, you know what I mean? It seems like their, their view of relationships is very transactional, which isn't how a lot of relationships operate in the real world. But aren't relationships between men and women generally transactional? I think that men um, get beauty and sexual intimacy from women, generally speaking, and women get resources from men. Right. Like men uh, are generally considered um, success objects and women are considered beauty objects. Right. 
Not necessarily. I don't think, and that's not even reflected in, because otherwise then rich men would be the, and, and fit men and attract or whatever kind of characteristics, those would be the only people mating. But when you actually look at the data, that isn't borne out by the data. You know, people tend generally mate across. So if you work at McDonald's, you typically find someone that works at McDonald's. If you're a lawyer, you typically marry someone across your social socioeconomic status, across IQ. Like this is the attraction mating hypothesis, the attraction similarity hypothesis, one of the most well-researched theories of attraction, assorted of mating. Um, th those are the kinds of things that typically determine who you end up with. It's not this like, oh, high value. And then this person gets all the, it, it, those, those things have not, and I've done a ton of research on this, unfortunately, from going on these podcasts. And a lot of times what they say relationships are like, are not actually reflected in the real world. What do you think of the notion of hypergamy? I don't believe that hypergamy has been reflected in the real world. I mean, there was a study, it's the Institute of Labor Economics, and the study is called the uh, economics of hypergamy or something like that. I have it in my phone. Um, they looked at over 33 million marriages from the 1800s to 2022. And generally women tended to marry men that were at the same social uh, class as their fathers. Was that the one that was conducted? I think it was in Norway or Ireland, somewhere in Europe, was it? They looked at a bunch of countries. It wasn't just that. But you, maybe what you're thinking of is the education one that was looking at 27 uh, European countries, which also that's the famous graph now that shows that women are dating down as they've entered the workforce. So. So oh, there is a question as to whether hypergamy was ever even like actually reflected mate selection in how would you life. actually define it like what's your understanding of that word and how it's defined well here's the thing Hy uh, hypergamy is the idea that women tend to date up when it comes to across certain, and up yeah across, across and up and it seems to really be across there isn't much evidence for up now they are more likely to date up than um, men, uh, women are, or the other way around, you know what I mean? But there's, it's still generally not a thing. That's not the most widespread um, way that people tend to mate. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people, a lot of people in the manosphere use like dating app data. But again, dating app data is not reflected in the real world. So we, we don't see this idea that like, oh, the top whatever percent of men are having sex with all the women. What we generally see is there's about 10% of women that are high in sociosexuality and about 10% of men that are high in sociosexuality. And they seem to be hooking up with each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's not this idea that, you know, or even women online who are like, oh, I only date men six feet and up. But then in real life, when you look research, it's on uh, ResearchGate and a, one other did like a huge study on this. And they looked at BMI and height and the difference between extremely short guys and extremely tall like which then there's short, medium, whatever, tall, was just three lifetime partners. So it's this idea that, oh, short men. Yeah. Well, I mean, women women don't put as much emphasis on height as guys that don't do well with women think. Um, they put more emphasis on the appearance of masculinity, like a V taper. So if you're five seven with broad shoulders and a narrow waist, you'll do better than a fat six foot tall guy, right? Well, I mean, um, even when you look at obesity, men that are obese tend to have the same amount of sex as men who are not. So. It, it, it seems to be that every what determines how much sex you have seems to be how much effort you put in it, how well you do with women. I don't yeah. know what other word to call it other than like game, as opposed to how much money you make or how fit you are or how tall you are. Yeah. I mean, Jasmine, I can tell you're smart. I mean, you're obviously got a high IQ and I don't doubt that you're a licensed lawyer. I know some people have sort of poked at that and said, well, where'd you go to law school and where's your degree? It's like, I can tell my ex-wife is a lawyer. I've got a lot of, a lot of friends that are lawyers. So I don't, I don't dispute that, but I, but I wonder if, if you, if you take the controversial stand on some of these stats, just, just to be controversial, just for the attention, like, is that the angle or? No, I mean, like I would hear things online. I'm like, where the fuck are these weirdo? Cause this is, uh, you know, like in academia, like nobody has these kinds of views. Most people don't, if you, if you're familiar with it. So then I was like, okay, let me look this up. Like, let me look up. Like pe they will say things. And if you see me on some shows, I've corrected them because these people are on Some of your stats have been wrong though. Like I've watched a few of the clips. Huh? Some of your stats have been wrong though. Like I've watched like a few of the clips, like in the example, well, I mean, I can use a personal example with um, the notion of, you said that generally speaking, men and women don't date, or sorry, women aren't hypergamous and they don't date up. Um, so I did private mortgages for a number of years. I know that you're probably you know familiar with that business and how that works. And you have to look at a credit application and the, and the credit reports for your applicants before you even take a look at the um, home appraisal or any of those things. So I saw not dozens, but hundreds and hundreds of these things. And there was an obvious pattern that it, that had emerged to me even back then before I sort of, you know, like unplugged and got red pilled and all that. And it's like, Mr. Always made way more money than Mrs. In like 98% of the cases. 
Well, right? so a- women do marry across and up on the social economic scale because they're with guys that are making more money. Well, here's the thing. First of speaking. all, you, I, I have anecdotal experience too. I did estate planning. So I saw a lot of people, I, I did very high in my mom's an estate planning attorney. She has her own firm. So I worked alongside and I see, I haven't, you generally do find that if one person makes more, it's the man right now, the stats are that in almost half of us households, the woman makes as much equal to, or more than the guy. So for you to say your stats are wrong, because in my anecdotal experience, that's pretty weak and you you should know that. Number two is that I still think that you would see this trend reflected, but it's changing as women have entered the workforce. So especially- Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. I think it is changing because women are entering the workforce, making more money. They don't need no man. They've got careers. They've got you know their own jobs or houses and cars. So exactly. So there's when more you, women graduating with degrees than there are men for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So when you say like, oh, especially back in, that's why but, that study- But that's also like why women have such a hard time finding men is, is because there's a- there's fewer and fewer guys that are successful. So they find themselves in a position where they get in their thirties and forties and they're like, I'm ready to have a family and babies and I can't find anybody. Like there's nobody qualified for me to want to, you know, settle with because nobody's good enough. I mean, you may have that maybe your anecdotal experience, like in my anecdotal experience among highly educated women, although we're the only women who's uh, marriage rates are not declining. Everyone else's is declining. We're actually going up. Um, you don't really see that. Do people are getting what married. Do you think that is? Huh? Why what do you, do you think, think that is? Why do I think what is? Which one? That educated, more successful women are seeing more marriages, like you're seeing them go up. Um, I think that a lot of us, it, one, one, this idea that educated women have a harder time marrying is just not true because usually once you get to that place, you're surrounded by other educated men. Like this idea that, oh, your standards are now uh, higher and you can only go across or up. Well, you're surrounded by other attorneys. If you're a doctor, you're surrounded by other doctors. And I, I don't know exactly why, um, uh, but are they in happy marriages? Who knows? I mean, is anyone in a ha- who knows if anyone is in a happy marriage? I don't think we have any reason to believe that educated people are in more are in less happy marriages than everybody else. <laughs> well, educated women are less happy in long term marriages, and they divorce more often than no, they don't. Uh, they nope, do. that's that's a that's a so where are you getting that stat? Because that's one of the things I was trying to explain to Fresh and Fit. That's called a selection bias because they're looking at who's more likely to initiate. But college educated women are one way less likely to get divorced in the first place. Two, they're much more likely to have a marriage that lasts at least 20 years. A woman with a college degree um, is 78 percent likely to have a marriage that lasts at least 20 years. A woman without one is around like 40 percent. Pretty standard data that you could just Google in two seconds. It's on Pew okay. Research. Well, my data is different from your data, so we'll just agree to disagree on that. Uh, no, no, no. About, it's not that your data is different. Can you please tell me where you got your data? I don't have it readily available right now, okay, Jasmine, well, I do. You could share if I, you know, if I had known that this was going to turn into a, a debate or an argument to this regard, then I would have prepared it. What I wanted to ask you, you know, more about was, you know, your views in life and relationships. And that's to both the women, you know, by the way, Liz, I don't want to leave you out of the conversation, but mm-hmm. you mentioned earlier, uh, Jasmine, you were talking about how, uh, how to have a healthy relationship and, and how that works. Can you, can you explain how to have a healthy relationship to my audience? I don't think it looks the same for everyone, but I think when there's mutual respect, mutual support, when the, when people are together because they actually love each other, um, they're like, you know, one thing a manosphere says is, oh, when a woman, you know, makes more money, she's, you know, she's more likely to leave. Yeah. Well, those women probably didn't want to be with you in the first place. Um, so I think f- instead of gaining status and money in order to attract a woman who wants to use you for status and money, finding someone who has similar values that you feel compatible with and that has mutual respect and, and love. But what is that? All you need? Like, that's extremely abstract. I mean, talking about mutual, like uh, how do we put that into practical terms, mutual respect, mutual support? Like how does that manifest itself in reality? Maybe just deal with one of them. Like, like how do you manifest mutual Respect. What does mutual support look like? For support. Well, I mean, like, for instance, find, I think the first thing you need to do if you're trying to find someone is find someone who shares your values. So clearly, like, if me and <laughs> Mr. Rich Cooper, we would not spend two seconds together. Me and maybe you wouldn't spend two seconds together. Find someone who, who has the same values as you. I am all for traditional religious people going to church and finding someone there. I think they can end up being completely happy. There are people who are in polyamorous liberal relationships that are also entirely happy. So find someone who shares your values, shares a lot of your, it doesn't have to be like every single belief, but has the same kind of 
uh, foundation is you. And then I guess respecting each other in the sense of finding what works for your relationship and respecting each other's boundaries. I know it seems super. What does a man have to do to earn your respect? It is. What? What does a man have to do to earn your respect? Um, what does a man have to do to earn my respect? I guess showcase a lot of the traits that I find respectable. Like what? Um, being kind, being open-minded, uh, being intelligent. I respect intelligence. Um, being helpful, being supportive. Like those kinds of things I think are respectable traits. And I typically go for those. Kinds that's, of that's the exact same answer that every woman always gives, but it's not what they actually respond to though. Okay. Well, what do they respond to, Rich? Because so far you wouldn't even put up my stats that are actually correct. <laughs> and you, you know, I, I, well, I would didn't like know that to... we were going to compare stats, so I didn't, I didn't prepare stats. Well, I... it's not comparing stats. So when someone gets divorced I do these today, shows to have a in the United States, that's recorded. These are not difficult to find. It's recorded. This isn't like a study. It's on an observation. Yeah, it's recorded it's everywhere in the world. It's recorded in but Canada huh? too. Huh? It's recorded everywhere in the world. It's recorded. Yeah, in so it's too, very so. easy to find. So I don't know how you would have gotten wrong stats. What I think you're doing is what Fresh and Fit does, where you're taking a selection bias out of the couples that are already getting divorced. No, I read studies. What study did you read then? Why can't you pull up one? And I can give you like 10 places where this is recorded. I'll be right back. Hold on a second. Okay. So, well, while he's doing that, I want to get back to this because, because yes, like I, I think what we try to do on this show, on this channel, and, and the stuff that we talk about is we try to give guys practical... Uh, I only have one advice. here right now, actually. Hold on. And so saying things like be supportive or find shared values like they're very very in the abstract they don't they don't have they don't hold a lot of water they don't hold a lot of meaning unless you can be very very specific so I, that's what uh, i'm kind of looking for what are sort of these specifics that we can tell people to do well first of all i don't think your audience wants to date women like us anyway so it's really bizarre that you come to us for advice but two i would also say that um the first we're not a matching agency jasmine we're just having a conversation with ladies no i understand that but if you're if you're here to give advice to men would your advice to men be to date women like me anyway no my advice to men is having you on the show is an endorsement of men dating you yeah but then well women are different so what i say i like and the advice i would give to men would be to attract a woman like me so let's put that disclaimer there (laughs) if if you guys want my advice on how to attract women it's going to be women like me how would you rate yourself like between one and 10, like on a scale of one to 10? I think that's a stupid, whimsical and arbitrary Why? line. I don't, I don't, de- I mean, I don't, you're comparing yourself like women like me, like you're putting yourself in a category. So what category? I don't, I'm not putting myself in a category where I'm rating myself. You said myself that, you said women head. like me, right? Yeah. I'm saying women that what are fair, category liberal, is that? more argumentative, sexually liberated. Like those are the kinds of things I wasn't going women like me on a scale of one to 10. What are we rating on a scale of one to 10? I don't know. I mean, I'm asking you. Because you said I'm women like me. You're the one that wanted to rate me on rate on a scale of one to ten. What's the metric? You don't even know the metric. Jasmine. Yes. Try to roll with me here on the show. I know you're, you know, like a trained lawyer, and I know how to deal with that. It's cool. Seems like you don't. Well, you said women <laughs> like me, so that implies that you're putting yourself in a category, women like me. So I'm uh-huh. asking you to define okay. what the category is. Like, okay, is that I can on a scale of one to ten. If you don't rate yeah. yourself on a scale of one to ten, then what is that category? What is, so what are you wanting? I, I am genuinely confused. When you say women like me, I'm talking about certain traits and values. You that said I women like me. Yeah, women like me. I'm you talking about like certain me. values and traits that I have. Okay. You're telling me to rate some something on a scale of one to 10. What am I rating on a scale of one to 10? I don't know. You said women like me. So I'm trying to get clarity for myself and for my audience watching okay, right when now. I talk how about women like me, like, I'm, why not are you about, I'm not talking about a scale of one to 10. When it okay, comes so... So what is I a woman like, like you? Like, like what category that are, is that? That are pretty sexually liberated, sexually open, um, on OnlyFans, uh, pretty liberal, highly educated. Those are the kinds of things that are women like me. Okay. Not one to ten. Six point three three seven two. Like what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> sure. Six point three seven seven two. Got it. Um, what else does do they get wrong when they're dispensing this advice to their audience? Because A lot of these podcasts have a lot of views, like some of the clips will get hundreds of thousands, even millions of views, right? Like what other advice, like how would you correct the advice? You know, I suppose is what I'm asking you. 
Um, there's a lot of ways. So for instance, I think telling men that their value lies in things like brute strength and their ability to be an ATM machine is not helpful, especially with the landscape of Western society and telling them that rigid gender roles are like the way to go. And this is the way we're going to, cause it's not, you know, mm -hmm. abolition didn't malfunction in 2023. If those are the things you like move to a different country, our country probably isn't going to go backwards in that respect. So again, you like, don't think that men should be masculine or successful and wealthy? I don't think, I don't think masculinity is, uh, is, is dependent on how physically strong you are and how much money you make. Those are my, that's my thing is that's the thing this this message is masculinity strong. You based are on what? how much money you make. What do you mean? Based how did you come to that conclusion? What, why is that? What is your opinion of masculinity? Then you're cutting out. Like I don't know. Just, I couldn't. Hello. What is your opinion on masculinity and what it embodies? Then to me, masculinity. I guess like masculinity and femininity. It, although it's really like when I look at the traits that are considered masculine and feminine, they're both kind of stupid. And I think people who uh, display high in both, like depends what you're, what you're defining as masculine and feminine. My problem is the way that these kind of podcasts define masculine is fleeting and it's not the most conducive to current society. So now, what is that? So strong masculine Wait, men are not conducive. Strong masculine men. Well, if you're considering to strong masculine men to be men that are able to defend you if a, in a robbery and men sure. who are ATM machines, those things are not as valuable in modern society, right? And if you're in the unit, no, and they're not as valuable. But if somebody breaks in your house, you're not going to deal with the robber. He is right. But this is my point: is the, there's a reason you see the less chances of it happening are a lot a, lower a today than there are years ago. But who's dealing with the West. robber? You or him? There are, there are less rigid gender roles in the West for a reason. The most rigid okay, gender less, roles. Okay, less less rigid country. gender roles. So, so if there's unless, a robber that breaks in, so do you unless, deal with him? So unless you know, do you that deal I'm with him at five foot tall? My neighboring village. No, if someone robs, first of all, I, like I'm a bad example because I'm super rich. So I live in a really nice gated community. I don't have anyone. Say somebody breaks in, your guy is there. Who ends up dealing with the robber? You or or him who i think that anybody should help weaker people so if if i can't defend myself and i don't care if you're my man you could be anybody even a girl girls look out for each other all the time if we can i don't yeah think but let's be honest though your me, like, role as a man is you're not waiting physically for someone strong to, at five foot tall as a, woman, as a right? man is waiting for somebody to break into your house so you can display masculinity and this has been shown too in, in a, a, a study richard reeves has has talked about is that women now are finding value in their worth even when they in work and at home, whereas a lot of men, they put it all into work. So when they lose their job or anything like that, their rates of suicide skyrocket. Because so you're all about studies. You must know that women overwhelmingly true. choose men with high testosterone cues and masculine cues. I don't over think softer, weaker men. Where is and where is that from? Well, you're talking about all these studies you've run. Clearly, you've yeah, read and I just told Boss, you yeah? that what are these high masculine cues? Like, what is it? What give me a trait that met these men are getting more women than than men who don't have it? Tell me the trait because it's not height, it's not money, it's not BMI. Women overwhelmingly um, historically have always chosen men with strong masculine cues, high testosterone cues. Deep like voice, what? chiseled jaws, broad shoulders, narrow waist. When women may have liked bed. that. Just like you, if you had an app, you could be like, I want a woman with 32 double D breasts. Sure. But what's actually been reflected in mating practices isn't that. It's not that men with less chiseled jaws aren't getting married. It's not that men who make no uh, are making less money okay. don't get married. It, those types of things <clears throat> are happening. Liz, what do you think about all this? We've been leaving you on the um, sidelines for the last uh, 28 minutes and 26 seconds. I mean, what specifically? There's a lot to unpack. <laughs> Chime in on whatever you want. I need a break uh, from Jasmine know. for I, a minute. I was thinking about, like, you were asking about what masculinity is. And I was thinking about what I think masculinity is. And honestly, I just think when I've dealt with a lot of just very immature men, um, mentally just, like, underdeveloped and not are you like talking aware about men that are subscribers or men that you like date in the real that world? I've been with in the real okay. world. Yeah. So I just kind of think masculinity is like being aware of actually, I don't even know if that's masculinity or just something I prefer in a man. So I might've went into that. Like, so you have biased, a preference but, for masculinity. Yeah. Like just comfortable. Like won't, if I, if I want to do something like a little girly with them, they won't be like, oh, that's gay. Or like, like they're comfortable enough where like they know that they're not gay. So like, you know what I mean? Like that's what 
I have a little more simple answers. I don't, I'm not. Sure. Do you have a <laughs> preference for like a type of guy? Like, is there a guy that you usually go for, you know, if you could describe him? If like, is it a man of... bun, skinny jean guy with, you know, like a hipster look? Is it a. No. If, if you mind all of my body up... type of dude, like, what is it? No, I've dated like really overweight men. I've dated like uh, bodybuilder men. I've dated short, tall, outdoorsy. And I dated like a streamer. He literally never went outside. So, so I have no type. type. I, I'm just like, if I get along with you and you're a decent person or I think you are in the moment, then, you know, I'll give you a chance. Do you think that, I get along that with? some of these conversations, I mean, I'm just going to put this out out there, but some of these conversations would be naturally skewed in a certain direction because you're on a show looking to try to gain subscribers to your OnlyFans, right? So you're going to sort of tell people watching what would encourage them to take those steps, yeah? One thing about me, I, in so general, I overshare. Like overweight men, or are you just saying that is what he's asking? I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> no, literally, I did. I don't want to like out my ex, but like he was like a famous streamer and he would not show like from the neck down, like he would have his camera really zoomed in and because he was like very overweight and no one knew because yeah, uh, literally, you know what I mean? And he never posted photos, but except for like the neck up and. The, but I mean, you like the success and you like the fame. fame. I got along with it. We had a lot of common interests and yeah, he did catch my attention because I watched him on Twitch. Like I, I genuinely enjoyed his uh, streams and I followed him on Instagram and like he saw me and then we hit it off and I realized I didn't even know he lived uh, like 20 minutes away from me. That mm -hmm. was just a coincidence. And then we ended up spending the beginning of COVID together. So it's a um, like hypergamy is not one piece of a puzzle. It's got a lot of different pieces and you know, if the guy's fat and overweight, but he's making up for it in other areas because he's successful and he's influential and he's captivating to an audience, for example, then and I got along with him like sure. as a person, like yeah. person to person. But yeah, like we he provided a lot of cool experiences for me. Like I'm not gonna lie, you know, it it is nice talking to a man who like can take care of you, but it's not a requirement. I've I've talked to bums and had a great time. So yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I think the thing that's unique about what you gals do is you make quite a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. I made more during COVID. I've been slacking, but yeah. I'm working on like going a more creative path. Like I'm realizing I don't want to do OnlyFans forever. So, um, I'm not sure where I heard this. Maybe Jasmine, you can correct me because you're all about the accuracy. <laughs> um, did you say somewhere that you make as much in a month as what a like an associate lawyer makes in a year? I make six figures a month. Six figures a month. Yeah. So, yeah, the notion. Good. What's that? <laughs> I say, you go, girl. You go, girl. You, you get that bank. Um, yeah, so I mean, like the notion of, of finance, uh, it's not a problem for you. you know, like you said, you can buy security, you can buy a nice neighborhood, you can buy a nice car, you can buy a security system, you know, all that stuff. So I understand where you're coming from, from that angle. Um, Liz, do you, have any, do you have any recommendations on how to have a healthy relationship in today's world? Um, Same I sort wish of question you since it was brought up. <laughs> I wish I did. I've been single for so long, like three and a half years. And just like, I just feel like I've not been successful and I've had long relationships, but that doesn't necessarily mean like they're successful and I'm only 23. I'm still like figuring shit out. You know. So. What's the long-term plan for you? Like, is this going to be a lifelong career or is it you ride it until the wheels fall off? No, I honestly, I'm really into like the music festival world. And like, I really have been passionate about like event photography and stuff. Um, like film photography particularly. Mm -hmm. So that's like where my passion is. And honestly, I've been getting a lot of bookings lately. So I think I will be able to kind of like use OnlyFans as like a crutch, but like do what I'm actually more passionate about now. Mm -hmm. I used to be really passionate about OnlyFans though. Jasmine, do you have a, like, is there an exit strategy or is it just, you know, right until the wheels fall off sort of thing for you? Right until the wheels fall off and then probably get into a little bit more of social commentary, those kinds of things, because there seems to be an interest for people to for people um, for me to make that kind of content. So You have a YouTube channel, right? Mm -hmm. you Pretty. You I had it for a while, but I just started pushing out the content. Huh? Do people follow you, follow you for the social commentary? Yeah, I actually and I get a ton of subscribers for it. You would have you have no idea how many people because I have a pretty big Reddit profile. That's where I get most of my I have like millions of followers on Reddit. And there's a lot of people who are like, Oh my god, I saw you on Reddit. 
and I went to your YouTube and I loved what you were saying, or I love how you speak, or I love like it's it is a big turn on to a lot of people. And then and then that draws them into the subscriber to the to, Yeah, sometimes and some people are just like, hey, start a podcast. I'm really interested in this, you know, whatever. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's way more lucrative than law. Shorter hours too. For sure. Would you if you had daughters, would you encourage them to do what you're doing right now? If I had daughters, the only thing I'd want for them is for them to be nice people and for them to be happy and healthy. So if right. it was like a situation like me, yeah. If it was, if, if, if only fans did for them what it's done for my life and they had the head on the shoulder, the, the head on the shoulders of like, I feel like I do then yeah, go for it. The, um, interview you did on the soft white, soft white underbelly that I listened to, you mentioned something about your dad, um, sort of having a sit down talk with you. Um, mm -hmm. rather than the others in your family, you basically said, look, you know, you need to go back to school, donate all the money to char charity, stop this. But you didn't really follow up after that. I was curious, you know, what were the conversations after yeah, that? So there was no going the back was drawn to by school. Him. I was already, I had already taken the bar. So I was done with all that. I was, Sorry, uh, going back to work yeah. or something. Um, and yeah, I said no. And we didn't talk for a few months. But then eventually they call me and they're like, both my mom and my dad, we love you anyway. Um, we don't agree with what you're doing, but you're still our daughter. And actually, my dad's here making me dinner right now. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like you had a good relationship with him. So the whole you've got daddy issues is completely out the window, right? Yeah, I'm very close to my dad. In fact, the only kind of daddy issue I have is that I was extremely like favored and spoiled by my dad. <laughs> So like he almost like some people are like he's made you a narcissist, which I don't I, I'm not saying that that's true. But yeah, he just from when I was a kid, first of all, super involved. Um, we talk for hours a day still like I'm such a daddy's girl. Always have been. Mm. I have Do you guys both want to have a family and children? I have I'll a question for Jasmine really quick. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go um, do you think that like you having a better relationship with your dad like upped your standards for your relationships with like men? Absolutely. Absolutely. I do believe that 100% because one thing about me is I've never dated an asshole. I've never dated a guy that was rude, disrespectful to me or anyone that didn't treat me very well. And I do attribute some of that to the fact that that's how my dad always treated me. So I think there is some um, good, there's a good basis in believing that your relationships with your parents, especially early childhood does determine sometimes how you act. Now, it doesn't mean you can't break out of those patterns, but I do think in my case, like I always had high self-esteem, um, partially because my dad always told me I was a shit. So. Mm. <laughs> um, well, sorry, back to the question point, about marriage those and family. Why relationship worked out? Hmm? Go ahead, I was Mom. curious up to this point if there hasn't been any toxicity or this and that. Like, why why haven't those relationships? I've, I've only had two relationships. The first one, we were together for four years. He went to medical school. I went to law school, so we just moved apart. And then the second one was a guy I was dating in law school, and yeah, we just started bickering and stuff. Um, once COVID hit, because we were together twenty four seven, we're still friends, but I, we're just not together anymore. I mean, most relationships end. That's that's all statistically accurate. So most relationships end. Yeah, I'm hmm? aware. I, I think a lot of times though, what we hear is that it's a very common occurrence where you hear women say, "Oh, he was toxic." Like the the new one that we're hearing a lot of is like, "Oh, I was in a an abusive relationship, and he was emotionally abusive." And so, um, you know, but I know you've said that you wouldn't get married. I've I've heard you say stuff like that. So, um, so that's fine. That makes sense. So. Okay, so that kind of leads to my next question because I was asking, you know, did you have plans to get married, have a, a family, you know, children? Uh, I, I was going to let Liz answer because I feel like I don't want to hide. I was get accused of hijacking the show, so I don't no. want to hijack the show. Go ahead, Liz. <laughs> um, I want to one day, but I'm 23, so I'm kind of just, I'm not really looking. They say good things find you when you're not looking, so I'm like, I'm, I'm not you're looking. You're really young. <laughs> I'm just what praying. You, you're still extremely young, so. You're not in any rush. Um, for me, if I did have, I, I don't want to get married as, I might get married legally just for the incentives, like legal incentives. Um, but I, when it comes to children, I'd want them in my mid thirties, if that. So. In your mid thirties? Isn't that a bit late though? Um, well, one, uh, I don't really care if they're biological. I wouldn't mind adopting. I'm pretty rich. I can afford IVF if I need to, but I would rather wait until I'm retired. Um, and I'm ready for kids. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, if you have the means, I guess you could even buy a surrogate to, to do all the work for you and everything, right? If I need to. Yeah. Um, have either of you given any thought to what your current career might do to affect that in the future? Do you think it will or? Uh, do you want to go first or? I, I don't think it will because I just like, I if it does, I just won't be with that person. And that's simple my simple that. answer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about you, Jasmine? And then for me, I've never liked guys that had an issue with OnlyFans. So even like two years ago, I didn't have any social media at all. And mm -hmm. I was never a try like if even at that time, if a guy was like, I would never date someone on OnlyFans when I, I would never talk to him. I'm just not into that guy. So for me, my dating prospects have remained pretty much exactly the same. No, even I think the guys that America, are like, you're right. Hmm? Sorry. I think in North America, you're right. There's there's gonna be an and there's gonna be way more guys that'll just look past it than will have an issue with it. Yeah. Um, I even the guys that are like, oh, I would never pay for an OnlyFans. I'm like, that's fine, but just you saying that, I'm like, <laughs> I see what type of dude you are, and I don't even mess with those guys. Well, what is that? Yeah. Type, what is that type of dude? I just, I just feel like they're like, oh, I would never pay for it. Like, I'll watch free porn, but like, watching free porn is arguably like uh, unethical sometimes. Not always. I mean, I. I watch free porn, but like just the fact that you aren't willing to support someone like making their own porn, that's just as good. And they would also enjoy it just because they don't want to pay for it directly. I like you're going to enjoy porn either way. I just when people say that, it just gives me an I, it also gives so, off the, like, oh, I'm so afraid of being a simp. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's yeah, true. it's like the insecurity. I see what you're saying. Like, you know, I have guys that personally are like, oh, yeah, like they would, but they don't even say that. They're just like, oh, yeah, get your money. And then, like, if we're talking, they're like, oh, yeah, I've never been on OnlyFans, so I'm not sure how it yeah. works. But guys are like, I would never. Pay. I'm like, okay, you're yeah. actually like the biggest simp behind closed doors. Like, they're trying to prove a point, And I just find that. Yeah, crazy. the lady doth protest too much. <laughs> um, so you're talking these are these are guys like on the street or these are guys that I'm trying to I'm trying to get an idea who like who we're talking about here. Like you wouldn't talk Any to Any men guys that, that I'm meeting talking pay. to a guy, talking to at a bar or like or even in like someone. Instagram DMs yeah. or anything. Okay. So a guy that won't pay for your OnlyFans is immediately no, a I'm guy that for has to, a guy that has to declare that he doesn't do that kind of thing exactly. So me and her yeah, but I thought you wanted a guy that you see eye to eye values on. So if that's a value he has, is that not him just setting a value and setting a boundary? No, it depends why he's doing it. One, if he's like, I wouldn't do this, and it's like, well, why? And he's like, well, because I think they're simps. Okay, well now you're a fucking weirdo, and I don't want to talk to you. Like that's why the is thing. that weird? Um, so because the act of simping, the act of simping is an inequal exchange of value. So is that what you see as simping, Jasmine? Is that, is that your definition? Uh, well, it's I don't use the word simp, so right. I yeah. usually go by the definition that the people in front of me say. Because are not you okay with Moff's definition? That it's an yeah, but then in that case, being on OnlyFans, I would say doesn't fall into the category of simping because you're giving money for a service. What's so the service? the content if, if you guys have a patreon i don't know what you guys have on this or you have anything where people can support or they get extra content on patreon you know behind a paywall on youtube whatever it's the same thing it's just different kinds of content so if you're saying that don't people, most of these guys have the hope or expectation at some point that it might turn into more though absolutely not i mean i am a it's top all a fantasy the whole thing it's all about just selling a fantasy like, yeah well and, also and Liz, i have a question for you so for me i've had over like eighty thousand subscribers since i've started now that's not active i'm like in the point zero whatever percent um are i would you say one of the like, top creators like, huh are you one of the top creators you said you're in the point zero to find as top so yeah i'm like in the top one percent or like it, it fluctuates, but I think right now I'm like a top 0.06% or something. She's in the top 1%. So. Okay, so she's top in the top 1%. Yeah. Um, right. And I would say less than 20 to 30% of the people that subscribe even message me. I don't know what it is like for you. So that's like the majority aren't even messaging you to have this relationship. And then out of the ones that message me, maybe I just suck and no one wants to talk to me. <laughs> out of the ones that message me, I would say half of those are just asking for content and stuff. I would say it's a small percentage that want actually a relationship that extends beyond you know is that my is that your experience too Liz? well the way that i've always done my only fans and i've never had management ever i've done everything by myself so like uh, from the beginning i've had regular conversations with people i've there's some people i've had conversations with almost every single day i'm not on only fans every single day sometimes i'll schedule stuff but 
like every day that I am on, like I talk to these people for years and years and it's just regular conversations and they'll buy content in between. And like some people just need someone to talk to sometimes or like some, someone they don't know. Just Are you to, therapist sometimes you think? Sometimes. Yeah. But what, what percentage of your subscribers would you put in that category? Probably like 15 to 20%. I have regular conversations with. And then a lot of people will just buy content or just say a random thing every now and then. Like, yeah, like, yeah. I so told it's, not, or it's not even the majority that are that are. Yeah. So it's only a small percentage of them that are that are there with the expectation that it might turn into more than just. A, a I have some guys fan. from Tinder that are hopeful because they found me through Tinder and they found my Instagram through Tinder and then subscribed and then they're hopeful because it's a different. There was a different, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <clears throat> but Moth, the type that, of content matters. Is that the third it? down I there? Mean, yeah, I'm just waiting for her video to show sure. up. But like the type of content, it matters, doesn't it? I mean, you know, if we're comparing our content to OnlyFans content, you're talking about a channel that strives and aims to give men actionable advice on how to actively improve their lives um, versus just selling a fantasy that they're not going to achieve or selling a woman that they'll never be able to have a relationship with um or i think a, it's a form in, of in a parasocial relationship yeah exactly what she I mean, said that's fine. Fine. we just declared that most of them aren't going in with that expectation just because you're like you're in your value our content is more valuable than your content well netflix thinks their selection is better than hbo selection at the end of the day people are paying for content you may not find it to be good content but it's just content that that people and, and a small percentage yeah, but you can't paint it all with one brush i mean you to sit here and say all content is created equal is just asinine it's not true well I mean, there's, you, a, there's a reason there's a it's reason entertainment why and there's joe rogan yeah, there's a it's, reason it's, why it's, there's a reason why joe rogan has the platform that he has there's a reason why guys like patrick bet david some of these other guys with their you know millions and millions of subscribers you know it, it's not not all and there's, not all yeah, and there's a reason equal. that the top only fan subscribers are making millions and sure. millions of too. So if you're just looking at how okay. successful people are, there's plenty of successful OnlyFans. No, it's not what we're, that's, but that's not how I'm measuring. I'm not talking about the number. I'm, I'm talking about the actual content of the content. Is it yeah, helpful? So, is it actual actionable advice? Is there actual so value? Added? Netflix, if you, if the only not, value is entertainment, then that's fine. We'll just call yeah, it free space. So we, then you could put us next to like Netflix. Like people pay for a subscription to see movies. People pay for a subscription yeah. to us to jerk off to porn. That's fair. Um, what All a waste to... of time, but it's fair. Sure. <laughs> what does it take to get into the top 1% on OnlyFans? I'm curious. For me, um, it's consistency. Uh, I was always really consistent on Reddit. Um, yeah, and, and a little bit of luck, honestly. Like, I'm not going to pretend that I can attribute it to, like, my body type is, you know, elude sex appeal. So I got a lot of success on Reddit from luck and that. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, but I would say definitely consistency and working hard. It is a job. Um, so to pretend that, you know, you can just, it's easy money. It's not as easy as people make it out to be. And I'm sure Liz can attest to that. Got it. Harley, how are you doing? Are you there? Good. How are you? Can you there hear you me? There you go. Yeah, good, good. Well, you made it. Sorry. I forgot the time. I forget the time difference. No problem. Just okay. you know, jump in as we sort of go here. Um, so I wanted to ask you about what um, you bring to the table in a long-term relationship or a marriage. Me? What do I bring to the table? Everybody. Everybody. Harley, if you want to start because you just popped in, fire away. Someone else can start. Okay. Liz, do you want to go? Um, well, like I said earlier, I'm 23 um, and I don't really have my shit figured out as much as like a grown adult would. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I think I'm a, a generally good person. I think I'm talented and passionate um, and open minded. I can really see stuff from both sides. And um, I'm what do you a, think, what I'm do you a, think I'm men a want goat. from a woman? <laughs> what do you think men um, want from a woman, Liz? Uh, 
I'll come that's back to you in a minute. Jasmine. Yep, that's a good question. It's, it's such an autistic question. It Because it, it depends on the man. <laughs> Why is it an autistic yeah. question? I'm asking you what you bring to the table in a long term. Well, it, then you have to give the fucking dumb. I'm nice. I'm royal. Like, there's just nothing yeah. you could really like. Oh, what do you, I have huge tits? Like, what the fuck do you say? <laughs> well, aside like, from the TNA, obviously, I have, yeah. I have great cooking skills. Like, um, what is a not stupid answer to that? I just want to know. Well, um, didn't you say that you don't cook, Jasmine? I don't. So I'm saying, but like, that would be a great answer according to you. Or like, what would be, I'm sweet. I'm list. I listen. Yeah. I'm attentive. Like, it's just like, so you don't have an answer then. I felt silly answering it. Yeah. It's a silly <laughs> question. It's like, yeah. Low key. Well, I mean, is it not oh, the question? Muff, what do you bring to the table <laughs> in a relationship to a woman? The ability to provide, protect, offer paternity. It's pretty simple. <laughs> okay. Man stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Offer like that's I take what care I, of the house. I pay the bills. I'm able to protect. Like I'm able to provide. Not a weird response? Then sure. In this space, it weird? might not be a weird question. In what weird? In what way is it weird to be able to provide children for the woman that I want to be with? I it, it's fine. I'm just saying, like, or in being able to be a masculine man in, who can in, raise them. In and teach my them opinion, lessons. and in Liz's. These aren't questions that we would even ask. And if I went to, if I was on a date and I was like, what can you provide the ability to protect, provide and offer paternity? I would like text my friends like, okay, you know. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, again, you may not ask it, but I mean, you're assessing them for that. I don't right? think that anybody would say sure. these out. Like I wouldn't say these to a person that I'm trying to. I agree. Them. That's why it's a weird question to ask on this podcast, but okay. No, but it's not because we're not sure nobody's trying to date you. And I think we're trying to have open conversations about what men generally find attractive and want from women and what women find generally attractive and want from men. But see, it's so, so sitting here saying the questions are stupid is kind of fucking dumb. It's like, but you're, it's like you're a setup. It's like, yeah. And, and there's no answer that doesn't sound, in my opinion, ridiculous. And so in Liz's opinion, too. So we're just at a difference of opinion because the women in here, obviously find the question silly you don't no, but it's okay. a genuine question right i but mean you why, have to you have to know like silly? women are all about their value and i know my worth and their value so what i'm asking is you know what is it that you bring to the table in a long-term relationship or a marriage with a man right and it's you know like it's a but genuine it just question sounds like i'm nice okay sure i'm nice i'm smart but you're I'm not nice happy. I am nice. I'm yeah, not we nice can to tell. You that's subjective. Nice. Yeah, that's subjective. I'm not nice to you guys, but I'm. I'd I haven't nice. seen you yeah, be I mean, nice to anybody that you've talked to on any podcast. Any of the men I've been with, they would say I'm nice to them. Okay. Um, I'm, so it just depends. I also don't find you know you guys to be nice, but I'm sure you're nice to the women that you are around. So this is one. It's a super subjective question. I'm intelligent. I can have good conversations. I'm very supportive. Like I, like we could talk loyal. about. This, it sounds like we're in like yeah loyal. It sounds like we're doing like. What a do you weird, think? Like, job interview okay so what do you ladies like, sorry harley let's go let's go um i would say like uh like i have a good work ethic and i feel like that's something that um like i'm not speaking for like anybody else but uh like women my age just seem to like um lack that or at least i see a lack of that like i'm a bartender and a waitress in like downtown nashville and it's pretty busy down there and just like in my job alone and like other jobs that I've had, like girls my age don't have nearly like you, the work. I'm 20. I just turned 25. Okay. So work ethic. So but what do the what gals think that you? men want out of a long-term relationship with a woman? Depends on the man. You can't put everybody into one category. And that's the issue with this kind of content is they do this one size fits all. Support. Mm -hmm. Definitely loyalty, like, like um, bare minimum. Like loyalty, support. Loyalty, um, support, yeah. The, the confidence, I would say that like if, like if his job were to go bad or were anything were to happen that like his wife were, had the, like would have the capability to like hold their family if it was needed. At least that's what I like, I mean. I would think that a man would look for that security. Like financial security. Is that a question you want to chime okay. in on, Jasmine, or are you over that? Uh, what men want in a woman? It, again, it just depends too much on the man. Like the kind of men I like probably want way different things than the two of you want. So, who are we asking for? What do you think men want in general? This depends on the man. What don't you get? We're in. A, we, we we're right now. We're in the United so States. How, right? So so how about we this? I mean, you're an intellectual. So if you 
if, if everything is singular and depends person to person and there's no such thing as commonality, then me, how do we bro. find anything else about the world, about men and women? How do we find anything out ever if it's just subjective to well, the individual? I don't do subjective. That's why I just spend a lot of time bringing up research data, et cetera. Bro, but objective. It, how do you find out any commonalities between anyone if everyone is completely well, you don't you, you, you don't say everyone's an individual, but we're in a culture war for a reason, right? Liberals and conservatives have literally different brains, right? Conservatives have larger no, that okay well then you're just anti-science because how is a political opinion mean you have no what i mean is we have different values and so the person's values will determine the kind of mate that they want now it doesn't mean every single person is different but there isn't one size but fits that all. goes against biology and everything we know about what men are attracted to and women and vice versa that's it, not it's true very even rarely... evolutionary biology no. is not set in stone there are competing theories as to which like evolutionary biology is not like the other science on a hard sure, time but top down men beauty men but even when it comes beauty to and attractiveness. there isn't actually a consensus serial monogamy seems to be the large consensus for evolutionary biologists for the most uh, successful mating strategy serial monogamy tends to be it but even that is like there's so many different competing theories as to our evolutionary backgrounds why we believe the things we put culture also plays a big role into all of this so it, there's a lot of factors that come in when you just do this black and white thinking it indicates you lack critical thinking skills. I'm sorry. Were you always in what way this is it black and white thinking? Huh? Were you always well, this you it's black and white men like this and all men like this and all women like this. That no, is we don't white. do that. So that's not listening. We don't say all men anything. We don't well, say when you all women anything. Men like, which men? Generally men. speaking, across the majority of men. Like, okay, well, you tell me what men like so I can determine what if it, that's what it what it surprise you like that signals men... of beauty and fertility. Yeah, like would you okay. Would you be surprised? They like that, white that hips, men they like big like... TNA. They like women that look like they can carry their children. They look, they look for. But beauty. even that has a lot of. I'm still talking. I'm still talking. I'm still talking. I'm still talking. Facial symmetry, all of that kind of stuff. They look for these signals in beauty in women. Exactly. That's what men are so, look for and that's what we're attracted exactly. to. Exactly. So beauty has an objective component, but this is the but that you don't have the critical thinking. So there's also a high subjective component and there are cultural. Moff, you don't have the critical thinking skills, my friend. I'm, I'm just saying, well, now I'm talking, yeah, I'm right? They've done studies where different cultures like different waist to hip ratios. Some cultures like them wider, some like them. And then when like people in Africa moved to like the UK after a few generations, their preferences started to match those of the UK. So culture, all of this stuff, subjective, like me, I have huge fucking natural g cup some people love that some people don't like that there's just different I think what they mean i think what they mean is like like men like just how like i guess like people like we like as a people like have like us kind of like a certain set of rules like that we kind of like live by there's like unspoken um like that's just like men like i think they're just asking like men in general like like what are just like some things that you think that men well, so yeah, I want, say like you, you, that you know what I'm saying like that all men that you could say that like all men can like like or like you know what I'm saying look for just like the you know like the basics I guess I mean certain things but for instance like waist to hip ratio that's correct but that differs how extreme that is differs in different cultures in different yeah. in different Right, but there's always a preference that. for but like, a I feel like, waist, I feel like waist waist all ratio. men, though, I feel like all men, though, want a woman who's not going to cheat on them. You know what I'm saying? A, a woman that they can confidently say that is not going to cheat on them. Obviously, a beautiful woman, a smart woman, a woman who isn't going to make a fool of herself or a fool of her husband. Um, well, see, a fertile into- woman, yeah. a woman who can have children. You know, see, Harley's getting some answers here, right? Yeah. Well, see, She's like actually talking like about smart women. I've, I've just done I've done Fresh and Fit three times now, and one of their top things that they say is men don't care about how smart a woman is. They don't care about IQ. They don't care about education. So yeah, that's not don't. true for all men, but but, all but, then, see, now, but then I mean, that's, that's where that's that's where what you say comes in when it comes like that's where what you said where it says but there's it depends a big on the man. If talking about there's a big difference if we're talking about seventy IQ versus one hundred and seventy IQ. People right? so, typically I mean, we're talking meet. about avoiding the extremes, but we're talking about it generally doesn't matter to a guy as long as you're not on either extreme. It generally doesn't really matter. That's well, typically people tend to mate across IQ, and this has been replicated year after year after year yeah. for a very long time. Okay, so, that's fine, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a conscious decision made by men. They don't screen women and say, What's your actually? IQ? There was a study it just sort done. of goes was, out and no, happens. There was a study way. done. It's it's uh, look up the luxuries and necessities of mate selection. 
And they found that for when the options were limited, men tend to focus more on physical beauty, women tend to focus more on status, but even the researchers didn't realize that. And then they looked at kindness, but intelligence was actually a necessity for both genders. So again, you guys may be on, that's why I don't, I look at the overall studies. Like I actually spend but time- intelligence I'm, what? But intelligence is of what? Important, having equal intelligence, having the same intelligence? No, there is a threshold. There, there, people, both men and women cared a lot. It was a necessity for someone to have the uh, the level of intelligence they were looking for. Whereas kindness, loyalty, those things were not even 100% necessities. It seemed to be, especially when options were limited, when options were vast. So for men who have a lot of options, then they can look for other things too. But intelligence for both genders was a necessity. I can tell you right now, like higher educated people, lawyers, doctors, they're not, they, they want to date women that are, that can intellectually stimulate you're, willing, you're so willing to rely on these small sample sizes and these small studies and yet when somebody brings up something like a tinder study or the match.com study you're so easily chuck that out the window and say that's not reality and it's no not reality. i don't say well i'm just saying that that's not reflected in the real world so we have the tinder study and then we look at the real world dating practices and see if we found the same thing this is what statisticians do this is what scientists do this is what researchers have done have right so they're the like, okay. huh have you seen the flaws in some of these studies you know that's why are? I that's why I typically rely on the ones that have the that have been replicated, peer reviewed, and have been so like you you didn't even you even disputed divorce statistics. Divorce statistics are pretty set in stone because they know the demographics of everybody who's getting married and getting divorced, and you still don't take those seriously. So I don't know what study uh, and that's that's I'm sorry, what don't I take seriously? The uh, college educated women or educated women are less likely to get divorced. If you don't even they know divorce that, more than ready. than any other they, category, they don't. Yes, <laughs> and this is, and you won't even pull it up. Me telling you, but you said you had some study that shows that, and I'd love to see it. You still haven't shown me it. Well, I have one study over here, but it talks about happiness and long-term relationships. I don't have my stack of other studies. Well, okay. So they know that I was going to have to prepare studies well, for you tonight, Jasmine. I thought well, we were going to have a conversation, some dialogue. Like you're, well, here's the thing: if I was running a show, I would be very careful. Okay, stop, stop. This is my show. It's not your show. Okay, yeah, that's enough. You asked me to be on hey, here. For that's enough. It's my show, not your show. Let me ask you this question, okay? Let's move on because you're, this is not a courtroom, okay? We're not gonna argue here like this. Let's have a conversation, some dialogue. Let's try to do something productive, okay? Okay, but you're spreading misinformation, but okay. Move on. Let's carry on. What are the flaws that you've seen in the studies? The, which study? Any study, like what are the flaws that you've seen? Because you mentioned there's, there's no flaws. There are really no flaws in the divorce. Okay, so let me explain the flaws to you then. So just stop talking for a minute. So for which study? I'll tell you right now if you stop talking. Are well, you ready? Well, I want to talk about divorce statistics because you seem to want to avoid that. So I want to know what the flaw in me saying that divorce uh, college educated women are more likely to get divorced. I want to know the flaw in that statistic. Are you done talking? Well, I'm not going to stay on the show if you're just not going to engage with me. You're just going to engage with your question. You're free to leave if you like. Well, okay. you can ask me and then if you're going to move on to something. You asked me to tell you where I've seen a flaw in a study. I'm going to explain it to you. Will not you stop talking? Study, so I can in my it? study. In your study. Yeah. I don't know what study. your study is. I haven't seen it, Jasmine. Can I pull it up? You won't let me. Pull it up. Go ahead. Pull it up. Okay. So I'm going to put, 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 put in the chat. I'm going to put up the divorce statistics from the U.S. Bureau of Statistics, and I want you to explain to me how this is the what's wrong with this. Okay. Or you could just literally. This is not you. I want to know if any of the studies I'm talking about. So we could even look at. Do you want to look at the Center for Divorce Education? What, where exactly? Bureau of Statistics for Labor Statistics, which Pew Research, all of them here. We'll pull up Pew Research. Did you put it in the chat? Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. And then tell me how this is wrong. And and this is also what you can find 200 other sources with it. Well, so. granted, this is the first time I'm going to click the link, Jasmine. Like, I haven't seen this one. Okay. I don't even know what <laughs> I'm looking not. at. Here. Wait, but then how did you figure out that college educated women are more likely to get divorced when that is because I've seen the opposite. studies on it. I've read Which them. Study? You, what you're doing is I you're don't have them here in front of me. How many times do I have to explain it to you? Are you thick? Well, I just don't understand how you, what you're saying something and you don't have a source okay. for do it. Do you want me to pull this up so we can deal with it? Okay, do you want me to pull sure. this up? Let's, Let's pull it up. up okay? Let's put it up on the screen. You can tell me what it is that we need to look at. We'll get to the bottom of it, okay? Okay. There you go. So what do you want to talk about on the study? 
So here, here's some research, right? College educated women are more likely to have long lasting marriages. Um, 78% of college educated women who are married for the first time between 2006 and 2010 could expect their marriages to last at least 20 years. But among women who have high school education or less, the share is only 40%. You can go down and there's maybe more stats. I could also link you Forbes also published the most recent we have, which is 20. Okay, so what's the relevancy of this here? Yeah, right. Is that college educated women are more, less likely to get divorced? That's okay. not what this says, though. This is saying that they're more likely to have longer lasting marriages, that marriage is lasting 20 or plus. Okay, years. well, then here, no here bearing, hold on, that has no what bearing. What does it say here? Researchers <laughs> for the National Center of Health Statistics estimate that 78% of college educated women who marry for the first time between 2006 and 2010 could expect their marriages to last at least 20 years. Okay, so who are the Fine. participants in this study? Where's the details on that? Here, pull this up. Pull this. We'll have everything from and this it'll is the same here. thing or different. What's up? No, this is this is the 2021 stats. Uh, I just pulled it up from Forbes because that's the most recent we have. So pull up uh, that. Okay, hold on a second. See, guys, this is why you don't get involved with lawyers that are a pain in the ass. Okay. Revealing statistics, Forbes. Here we go, Forbes. Okay, so the we have 2021. So this is actually 2021, even though they're giving us 2023. Okay, but you're going to go in this. Go down, and you can see how many marriages end in divorce. When do couples divorce? But go down to college educated. What happens after divorce? Crude retiree divorce trends over time. Divorce rates. Third marriages have high divorce rates. Only six percent of divorced couples remarry. Divorces are more likely to die earlier than married people. Majority of divorces own their home. I'm not sure what I'm looking for. I don't see anything here about go college down. educated stuff. Yeah, yet. Go down. There's a lot of information here. And I don't know if you guys just aren't. So just, yeah, you Let just me just do a find. Hold on a second. Uh, where's the college? Do you find for college? Uh, find tool. There we go. College educated women are most likely to have a lasting marriage. One particular demographic group has the highest likelihood of a long lasting marriage, college educated women. <laughs> Earning a degree significantly decreases the chances of women divorcing. The benefits apply only when the degree is earned. And then go up a little because the stats above that. So mm -hmm. go up and also see divorce rates by education level right there. Yeah, um, okay. And you can see that college educated people have have less divorce in general. You can also see so, that. If you have okay. So let me read it here. Uh, education levels affect the chances of marriage succeeding with those who have attained more education experience and reduced likelihood of divorce. The divorce rate for people with an education of high school or less is 39 for men, 37 for women. Divorce rate for people with an advanced education defined as having more than a bachelor's is 26 for men, 30% for women, 29. Okay. So all this speaks to is that if you have a college education, it's saying that you're less likely to get divorced with people without a college education. That but is, there's, but there's also stats that say that women that are college educated initiate more divorces than any other category, and that's what a selection bias is. Sorry, I'm triggered because I'm so sick of explaining this to people who don't get like I don't. Get, so a selection bias. So you're looking at okay, people. But you that don't are have the data educated. here on who the participants are either. It doesn't even. Speak no, wait. To that. What do you mean you don't have? Okay, so let me explain something to you. So how Euro U.S. Bureau of Statistics and Pew Research pull this is they have the data of who's getting divorced is really easy because right because you get it's recorded. So mm -hmm. there's been lots of years where they've looked at that raw data of who's getting divorced, the number of divorces. We know the exact number of people who got married in 2021, and we know the exact number of people who got divorced in 2021, and we know their demographics. We know their age. We know all this stuff about them. And then they pull that, and U.S. Bureau of Statistics, Pew Research, I don't know if these are not reputable to you, they, they, they're the ones that do the analysis and give us this data. So well, I mean, you can find a study that's going to support that too, yeah. A study a study support, support and whatever you want. No, there's no study that supports the opposite. That's reputable. Well, if you can find one, find one. Okay, hold on a sec. Uh, You're going to find one that's divorce divorce more than men. I'm looking for studies here. Hold on a second. Women okay. education, marital violence and divorce. PMC PubMed Central Marriage Farm. This is a long ass one. Uh, let me just do a quick word search for uh, college and see if we can find something. Uh, American women awarded a four-year college degree, men over. Uh, this is fucking pages long. 
you know what this is this is starting to turn into a real moot point that's boring me and okay. i think boring the audience as well sure. we can move on but yeah let's move on from this, this I, like I, the only thing I if i the audience is that you if i knew that this was going to get into debating you know stats then i would have had stats ready for you and studies ready for you highlighted and everything clearly uh you've you've done this before <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, when someone yeah. says something wrong and the stats all show the opposite, I'm going to say that, especially when I have to explain right, what a selection course. bias is. When you're looking at just people who are more likely to initiate divorce and then you don't understand, it's, it's like yes, stats. But I mean, you're also like, talking about about flaws in uh, stats and studies that you don't understand either. That uh, with these, that's why I, that's why I'm picking very strong statistics with divorce is very strong. There's no, there's no, Oh, we, we got a group of 10 people. We asked them their personal feelings and surveys. That is a weaker study. Okay. I know how the levels of studies go, which one's the weakest, one's the strong. This is not self-reporting. This isn't any of that. This is actual government <laughs> statistics on who gets married and who gets divorced, but okay. Okay. I'll, I'll in the future, if I know that I'm going to have you back on, I'll make sure I have my arguments ready for you how's that sounds good sounds good we can move on now mm -hmm. looks like the chat's triggered too they want press one to make jasmine leave i'm not making you leave jasmine we're here to have a conversation okay it's up to you um what, what else do we have on that um agenda to talk about moff look at the ladies with their dogs eh? <laughs> mine was I, uh, bothering me they came out of nowhere <laughs> there was something that Jasmine said in one of her videos, and I think this comes into common points as far as notch count. Um, and she made a comment along the lines of anybody that cares about that or genuinely thinks oh, okay. a high notch count or a notch count in general matters. It's a cure, something like that along those lines. Um, so we could definitely go down that road if we wanted what, to. What was that about? Notch count? Do you mean body count? Body count. Yeah. Okay. We can, we yeah. Try to, yeah. Um, that isn't really my. I, I'm not sure where you caught that because usually my answer, and if you Google this, this is my answer. There's on only like, Q and A that you did on your channel. Okay. Um. Well, if you if you've listened to me on other podcasts, like I was just asked this on the whatever podcast recently, I say that in general. It, the number one thing that I think it can indicate is value. So I'm not opposed to someone caring about body count for me personally, if a guy cares about body count, um, then I think it's, it's those things. But if you're like a religious Orthodox Jew and you want your wife to also have shared those values, then, and they've slept with 2 million people, then probably it indicates incompatibility, at least with lifestyle or something of this have sort. Have you seen the studies on notch count as it reflects divorce rates? Yep. Institute of Family Studies uh, that says that two is at, so after nine, it goes up, but two is actually worse than three, four, five, six, seven, which is funny because then if someone's only slept with two people. Marginally different. It's not a study, massive difference. You should just have slept sex with at least one or two other people. <laughs> before you, do you agree with those studies or you disagree with them? I do think there is, uh, so the three biggest things that you can do if you want to reduce the likelihood of divorce is college education, first marriage, and a woman between 25 and 32. And then those other things like body count, I do agree after nine or seven or eight or whatever the number is, it does go up. But if you're a guy and you're caring about that, but you're not caring about the things that will increase your statistical likelihood of divorce more, then that's probably not the reason you're really doing it. Yeah, but men have a natural... They have a natural proclivity to reject highly promiscuous women from a biologically standpoint, for a biological Dumb. standpoint. So I mean, no, in general, I mean, we all are, we all are hardwired to reject naturally and have um, negative feelings toward promiscuity in women. I mean, that's how we're hardwired. I, um, I, I mean, we do have people that will say like they screen out for it, but I mean, it's it is a conscious, but it's also a subconscious thing that manifests itself in reality. I mean, you can say that, but I mean, even Rich said earlier, like in this day and age in North America, like there's a lot of guys who just don't care. You're not one of them. But again, you can date how you want to date. You can no, he didn't say they don't care. They look past it. They look past it because generally men that have to look past, generally men have to look past things like that because their options are so few and they don't have the luxury yeah. of choice or not spoiled for choice. So it's not that they choose to be okay with it. It's that they look past it because their options are either largely dated only fans girl or, or date a girl that's okay. had a very checkered past or <laughs> I, I, stay, stay alone. So there's three less than 3 million only fans creators worldwide. 
Um, then, then we won't use OnlyFans example. No, 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 no. I just want to know how, how it's it. really hard for men to date some to date people when less than one percent of women are on OnlyFans to find a girl that's not on OnlyFans. How absurd. like I just said, I like I just said, I'll strike that as the example. I'm talking about a woman who's highly promiscuous. And highly high promiscuity is also not really reflected in the data. Like even if you look at the GSS 2022 for sexual partners, the vast majority of men and women had sex with one person, whether it's usually in a relationship. Um, that's high. So, so I don't know what sociosexuality is. Sociosexuality is, I guess, how likely you are, how interested you are in casual sex or sex without any emotions attached. And it seems to be only about 10 percent of women who fall in the high sociosexuality category. Most people, this idea that everyone's hooking up with everyone, everyone has all these bodies, it's just not reflected in the data. Speaking According to data. how is that study being done? Are those just personal yeah. people volunteering? The GSS, but it's funny because the GSS, so yeah, the GSS has been doing this every single year. Um, literally since 1970s. And then in 2018, the manosphere really took it because in 2018, it showed 27% of men haven't had sex in the past year and they ran with it. But then in 2020, 2021, and every year before that, so that was like an anomaly year. Um, but the GSS is pretty reputable the, um, to for, for surveying this kind of stuff. And they've been doing it year after year with pretty large sample sizes. So if you want to discredit all of that, go for it. Um, but it's the best evidence that we have more so okay. than you can. Let me. I don't think it's very. I don't think women are very incentivized to be honest about something where most of society looks down on. I don't think. I don't uh, think yeah. people are incentivized to be honest in those situations. I'm so honest. I yeah. I, this is literally like the fact that he's saying women are never honest in these anonymous surveys from the 1970s. Not what I'm saying. <laughs> also, crazy. not what I said. You do a really good job of spinning people things, spinning things around that I didn't. You're saying say women. Strongly. Women are being dis. So you're saying the data may not be accurate because women are being dishonest. And every time I say that it leaves room open to be dishonest and to not tell the truth about, I mean, it, these things are. I'll, I'll give you an example of dishonesty when it comes to providing data for statistics. Okay. So do you know who um, Alexander is on Twitter? He's got a YouTube. It's called Date Psych. No, uh, it's not the playing with fire, Alex, right? No, that okay. guy's a goof. I'm talking about the guy with little chin thing, the little thing, and it's got his hair and a ponytail. His name's Alexander. No, he seems you like way less goof, though. No, he, he's, a, he's an academic, so he's one of your people. He likes the studies. He really likes the numbers. He conducts a lot of studies. So he conducted the study that he published on uh, Twitter, and I saw it, and I read through it. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I'd like to have him on because it was uh, people's deal breakers in dating, right? one of the topics that I talk about from time to time. So I had him on and we're going through the stats and the data. And there was one uh, piece that was compiled from women and there was, I don't know, 30, 33 points or something like that. And we're going through and it's like, um, you know, abusive, uh, BO, uh, bad uh, table manners, like all of these things. Right. And I'm like, but Alexander, where's height on this? Like that didn't even show up. It didn't even register. He's like, yeah, you're right. Doesn't that like, you know, because when you're surveying women and you're asking them to answer, you know, questions like this, they've, they've got their reputation to manage, you know, for example, so they don't want to come off as being judgmental. So they're not going to say something like height matters, but women routinely disqualify men for height. Right. I mean, you'll well, even see it in uh, dating apps. Like, you know, women will say, if you're under six foot two, forget it. Swipe left. Say right? something? Yeah, go ahead, Liz. Um, I think that honestly, the height thing started as like a meme at first. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like personally, like it's a scapegoat for a lot of women. Maybe they don't want to address why they really aren't interested in the man. And they're like, oh, he's not tall enough. Like, I don't know. That could be. Well, I mean, you're all short. Short. I think, it's women. I think you're all five foot, four foot, eleven. I, I think you have linked, Instagram. Right? I just linked a, the study that uh, it's a it's the biggest study they've ever done. I think the sample size is like I don't even remember, but it's the biggest study they've ever done when it comes to so unless men are also lying. Um, they where they look at height, BMI, and how many partners they had. If you want to pull it up, so it might be that women say, "Yeah, I want a guy with a perfect this and a perfect that, and who's six foot three, but in real life, I've dated guys all kinds of heights, you know, and yeah. Yeah. the same thing. Okay, so. but again, but there's certain things to consider when you evaluate these, you know, discussion points because you're all short women, right? You're five foot, somebody in their Instagram said they were four foot 11. So you're not tall women. So a guy that's five foot six, like as long as he's taller than you in heels, it usually seems to be good enough for women that are quite a bit shorter. But in not most even of, the heels. Fine. Yeah. Know. But like in <laughs> most men's experience and you know there's a lot of dudes watching in the chat right now but 
they they will come across dating uh, profiles and they'll be disqualified because of height. They'll, it'll explicitly say if you're not at least six foot tall or six foot two or something like that. And that's left, right. Right? I agree. So and dating apps it didn't even terrible. show up on Alexander's study. And he agreed. He's like, yeah, you know, the, you know, the potential for them being deceptive. I'm like, well, if you want accurate information on these types of surveys, you really need to hook them up to a lie detector to get the real answers, right? Because so you're going exactly to get answers, but not always the real I'm answers. I'm not looking at, that's why, I, okay, you guys are not getting this. I'm not looking no, at what No, I'm getting it. So there. let me go back to I'm your, actual, I, I will, I'm going to address this because this is shown ahead, no, in back. dating app data. You will see how women set their preferences. I the agree vast with you. majority of women set them six feet and higher. It's I not agree just about with you. In my bio, six foot above, it's set in their. I, I've done that. I'm one of those girls. So let me explain there to you, you why we do it. One, there are three times as many men on there as women. Less than half of women are even on dating apps have ever tried a dating app. A, so it's not even a good place to meet women because you're so outnumbered, and because we're more selective. In uh, Otherwise, everybody matches with you and you have no choice but to eliminate based on superficial things because you have nothing else to go on. Whereas in real life, I mean, Liz is nodding too. She knows what I'm talking about. In real life, that's why women don't like dating apps. That's why they use them way less than men do. Because it's like, you're just like, oh, everybody matches with you. So then it's like, okay, how do I get it down to just 30 people I talk to instead of 50, 5,000 people I talk to? Okay, I guess I got to select for height. But in real life, short men have sex, just have as many partners as tall men. Right. So, so this is a perfect example of how women are not telling the truth when it comes to their dating preferences. They say they will only date guys of six foot, but really they're only using it as a screening mechanism because they have too many options. I'm not so looking at is, what women are saying they prefer, though. I, none of the studies I mentioned are about what women say they prefer. I'm talking about when they're asked in these wide studies, how many sexual partners have you had in the last but thing? It goes about being honesty. It goes about, okay. about being it's, honesty listen, and about telling listen, the truth listen. in incendi potentially incendiary terms as far as women deep down know this is this is this is what kills me about like modern women in modern society is that if promiscuity is so celebrated and it's so amazing you can run around and do your thing and get run through and rash rock your body count up over 100 people how come the first insult that's always hurled out by women to other women is she's a hoe she's a whore she's a slut she gets around she's dirty because they know deep down because they know deep down that those traits are actually undesirable so this and is so exactly when you what have situations about. where women are being asked, what is your notch count? And so even, even if it's an anonymous survey, women have a biologically hardwired mechanism to be a good chimp and to not make themselves look bad, even if it's only to themselves, okay. even if okay. it's subconsciously. So if you're saying, isn't that you assuming though? All the, yeah, exactly. No, All the based in biology and society. Since the 1970s, they're going to discredit both what men say and what women say when it comes to body count. And no, all because men and women are different. Men and women wait, are wait, different. But men, men generally so don't have an incentive to men lie. Say too? I don't even get this. No, okay, because so men, don't, men don't that, have that same you're incentive saying that to be women dishonest. are lying about, and whenever they're asked in these research surveys, they are lying about how many sexual partners they've had in the last year, or that a lot of them are lying to the point where we can't trust this data, but we can trust your I'm anecdotal. Saying it's a possibility. I'm saying it's, it's a possibility that needs to be discussed. And that no, needs to be I don't. I don't account. think it's a possibility that it, it's happening on such a large scale that it's making this data show this much of a disparity between what you're saying and what's actually reflected in these wide sample sizes when these women are asked and when men are asked too. I mean, I've, I've, men and women are different. Well, are different. men being honest about it? Because a lot of the stuff you say about no, I don't have the incentive to lie. Either. Okay, so men are. You have to, Jasmine, you have to trust behavior not what's said. Okay, what behavior am I supposed to trust? Your guys' anecdotal experience and the people around you? What behavior am I supposed to trust? The behavior between the sexes when they act on certain, you know, certainties and uncertainties and how they behave and respond to certain inputs, sort of things like this. So I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Um, you brought up your college educated women have longer marriages. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? I think college educated women typically, uh, we are a little bit more versed like we as we go through we develop critical thinking skills education is linked with critical thinking skills so you're going to be a little bit better at picking a partner that is best for you than if you're like 19 and stupid so in this study over here they asked couples over a period of 8.3 years or something like that are you in love are you in a state of bliss like what's the status of your relationship that you're in what percentage of people do you think are in a state of love? 
Uh, I mean, according if you watch Off White Underbelly, I watched James Sexton, and it, he says like less than twenty five percent of people. He's a divorce attorney. I'm not sure where he's getting his stats, although he he's not anti science like you guys, so mm -hmm. he takes a lot of the stuff that. Oh, I'm not anti science. I'm, when you're, I'm, I'm anti what, is what are you saying? It's anti science. You, when you're saying that we can't take seriously. Right. I have any a follow up of question for you, Jasmine. What percentage of people do you think are in a state of bliss? This is the thing. A state of bliss. That's such a weird. I, I don't even know. I, I think I, that bliss would be defined as like they're obsessed with one another. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I got a BA in psychology. All I remember is that triangle. What is it? Consummate love in the middle. And then there's intimacy, passion, commitment. And throughout it's just your a straightforward question, what percentage? What do you mean? What, I, well, I gave you all I the only time I've looked into this is just what James Sexton said. And he said it's less than 25 percent of people who are happy in their marriages. Yeah. Uh, I would love well, I'm for not you talking to about happiness. I'm talking about love and a state of bliss. bliss. So is that is a state of bliss consummate love? What is state of bliss to you? They're obsessed with one another. Obsessed with one another? I don't think any couple is obsessed with one another their whole lives. That's kind of bizarre. Well, over eight years, two percent say they are obsessed with one another. Yeah, that's the same period of time, about 13% say that they're still in love. So okay. if you've got these these college-educated women that are in, uh, I don't know what it was, 20-year marriages, was it? Well, they're less likely to get divorced in the first Over a period year. of 20 years. Okay. So why do you think that they're less likely to get divorced over a period of 20 years if most people that are married are not happy? So... Uh and and happiness comes and goes throughout marriages. That's what like it, this is psych one oh one. I don't even think it was high. Like when they teach you, like okay, consummate love is when you have all three. Um, it's you a have straightforward question. Why do you why do you think they stay married for twenty years if they're not? Because in a state they of understand love? they understand that marriage is not all honeymoon phase, and they understand mm -hmm. that not every moment of it has to be you're in love with each other or in okay. a state. It's not place. linear. What's it's, yeah. what's what's also consistent with college educated women? What do you mean was also consistent with them? They make a lot of money, right? Generally speaking. They tend to make more money than non-college educated people. Yeah. Okay. And you're saying in your observations with professionals that are college educated, they date pretty much like at the same level, like not up at the same level. That's not in my experience. That is what the data. Lawyers date doctors, doctors date lawyers. No, that's uh, what you yeah, I mean, on, yeah? It's, it's just known that lawyers, uh, this is also, unless you want to find an issue with this, that the number one profession that lawyers marry are other lawyers. Okay. So lawyers will marry lawyers. Doctors will marry doctors. Doctors will marry lawyers. Doctors will marry accountants. Accountants will marry lawyers. Like that sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying. So this is what college educated people are doing over the 20 years. It's not just 20 years. They're less likely to get divorced ever, but they're less more, likely to get divorced over the 20 years. So why do you no, think ever. that they're staying together? It's not like they get divorced at 21 years. <laughs> okay. Why do you think they're, they're more likely to stay together? I think because they're not they're not getting married, they don't have this idealistic kind of more naive view of marriage where they think marriage has to be honeymoon phase 24 seven. I think there's also a stat that says under 25 people, women who get married under 25 have a way higher likelihood of divorce as well, because they I don't think they have a realistic view of marriage. That would be maybe my guess. Now I have no. Chat, evidence. Why do you think they stay together over or they're more likely over 20 years to stay yeah. married if they're college educated? Put it in the chat. Moff. Question for exact same question to you. Why do you think these college educated women per her stats are more likely to stay married if they're dating across, they make a lot of money? Because their options are limited because of their socioeconomic status. And the only people that are going to give them the time of day and the only people that they can actually want to be with are people that are on the same level as them for the most part. I doctors would... marry doctors because yeah. they have the same status, the second socioeconomic scale. And no one else if wants they, them? If they no. do... I would no. What I would I would also argue. I would I would also argue that if if they're marrying across or on the same scale or the women tend, these women tend to do better than the guys that they're with. Generally speaking, right? So no. they've got more to lose in a divorce. You know how family law works. Whoever's making more money usually gets fucked. But also, these are people that are more likely to do the prenups and stuff anyway. Educated, yeah, but people. over 20 years, you know, as well as I do, a prenup usually doesn't hold much shot. water. No, no, Toilet it has paper. to be conscionable procedurally or substantively. Okay, Liz. Um, I was gonna say a reason that I think that their marriages last longer, maybe because I feel like people who have went to college are a bit more disciplined and like they have experience in being disciplined. Um, I struggle with self discipline, I didn't go to college. Uh, so I feel like, you know, just a relationship isn't easy. So having that prior experience, like discipline for so many years and like working towards a goal, like whenever you get married to someone, you know, the goal is to stay together as long 
You know what I mean? And so I feel like that's another reason. Harley, did you want to chime in on it? I'm curious <clears throat> if you have any thoughts. Um, also, I had to wait on... minutes. I tried to message them all. But, like, depending on, like, what a woman, I guess, has, like, gone to college to study. But, <clears throat> like, if a woman has gone, with, like, specifically, like, say, to college to study, like, psychology, there's a certain understanding of, like, mental illness. And, you know, like, some people don't believe in mental illness. I personally do. Um, it has affected my family, you know, like, quite, quite a bit. So I definitely think it's real. And I think that when you under like i feel like educated women who have gone to college who have studied that have a deeper understanding for not only men but just other people like it's hard to explain i guess no i think i get the gist does that does that make any sense i think so um we got a usually a 90 minute show but i have one more uh i guess question and you know all the ladies are free to chime in but i sort of wanted to pose this to jasmine because um she's uh she's a legend in her own mind i guess um what is what is your best what is your best solution for men today because you've openly criticized um people that have offered solutions you've said a lot of their solutions are wrong mm -hmm. uh they're would you say they're disconnected from the world so what would your solution be to the differences that the sexes right now have, the divide, you know, the opinions that men have of women, the opinions that women have of men that, that keep them apart? What is your solution to all this? Because, I mean, you must have put some thought into that. Yeah, and I, I, I'm going to steal from Richard Reeves here. Um, one thing is I think we need to reverse the, edu like the education gap has not only like completely gone away but it's reversed and so we need more men to be able to like starting men one year later because they're they their brains develop later than us i think that could change a lot of things getting men more into heal um health education administration literacy jobs um especially as with ai automation and stuff those like brute kind of like factory type jobs are not going to be around anymore. I think men, just like women, we've put such a push for women to uh, find more value in themselves other than being at home and being a homemaker. I think we do need to put a push for men to realize that their role is a breadwinner and their, how much money they have and how physically strong they are, that they are more than those things. And they are they have value inherently as a man, as a person, instead of just those few factors. So those are a couple things that I, I, I push really hard for. Um, yeah. Have you seen any of those work in real life, like in action? I haven't seen what you guys say work in real life either, but yeah, I mean, I do know that, uh, you're talking to two men that live it. And there has been these policies pushed. Jasmine, are you listening? You're talking to two men that live it. Uh, okay. I also have hundreds of men in my community that also live the exact yes, same okay, life and yes, have very good relationships I mean. with women. You're, it's like being in a hospital and being like, all the people I see are sick. Yeah, because you have a show where this kind is going to attract that kind of man. So I understand that. But you're the single one that's not in a relationship. Moff and I are are fine. We've got hundreds of guys in our community that are doing just fine. How we can help men and how I utilizing our skills and tools. So I'm asking you how your skills and tools have panned out. You haven't seen them pan out. Well, I have. If you look, if you let me even pull up the book. I can give you examples of when I don't need they a book. I'm asking push for when when I mean you can't help. even use yourself as an example. We, when we use these well, am I not a man? What am I trying to if you guys are saying you're a man, do you are you giving no, me I'm a, asking you for solutions for the sexes for men and women and to I bring think them together? Policy positions, what we've seen is that when those policy positions have been implemented, it has seemed to improve <clears> the lives of men by quite a bit. Yeah, you're talking so, about the college education that sort of draws them into the 20 year statistics with, you know, no, no, no. I'm talking about, I'm talking about successful it, over the 20 years, was it? No, I'm saying it's helpful to men to, to, to get educated, to have access to better paying jobs, to also. Why? So they can be married for 20 and, years and be miserable? I can't hear you. You're like breaking up. I don't so know. So they could be married for 20 years and be miserable? Why are they miserable if they're... See, you're just making shit up. I don't know how to answer this question for you. How am I making it up if it's here in a statistic that I pulled up? Well, first of all, link me that study, but I don't think that they're necessarily all miserable. You said what two... They're the study not study is by Aceto and Aaron and so does long-term relationship. Well, can you shut up for a minute so I can finish talking? No. You're so annoying. You invited me on. I was Does down a long term that. relationship kill relationship. romantic love. Why? That's you the title of the study. You, can go, you asked me for the title. I'm giving it to you. 
Okay. Uh, well, I can't my link point, a piece of paper, Jasmine. And, and, and That's this, why I'm reading you the title. And the statistics shows that men who are educated or men who have better options in the in the economy mm -hmm. are worse off in marriage because that's the advice I was. I've never done this before, but I kicked a guest. I had to do it. That's the end of the show, guys. Thanks for watching, ladies. Thanks for joining us and chiming in. That's it for tonight. Thank Have you for awesome having night. us.